I'm going to talk a little bit about lipid metabolism in order to help you get ready for your biochem final. So there's basically two parts to lipid metabolism. There's catabolism, which is the breaking down of fats, and anabolism, which is the biosynthesis of fats. Most fats are stored in the body in what is called adipose tissue. It's basically fat cells that have a nucleus, a little bit of a membrane, and then a whole bunch of fat that's stored in the middle of it. Most fat is stored in the form of triacylglycerols. Triacylglycerol has a glycerol backbone and three fatty acids that are attached to each of the carbons. The first step to breaking down a triacylglycerol is to remove the fatty acids from the glycerol backbone, which you do through a series of three hydrolysis reactions. A lipase is an enzyme that cleaves off a fatty acid from the glycerol by hydrating the bond. In the first hydrolysis reaction, triacylglycerol lipase cleaves off the first fatty acid. In the second hydrolysis reaction, diacylglycerol lipase cleaves off the second fatty acid. And in the final hydrolysis reaction, monoacylglycerol lipase cleaves off the final fatty acid. That leaves us with a glycerol molecule and three fatty acids. The glycerol molecule can be converted to a glycolysis intermediate. In the first step, glycerol kinase transfers one phosphoryl group from ATP to glycerol to create glycerol 3-phosphate. In the second step, glycerol 3P dehydrogenase reduces one NAD plus to an NADH and oxidizes the hydroxyl group in glycerol 3-phosphate to create dihydroxyacetone phosphate. The important takeaways are that the first step is a phosphoryl transfer that consumes one ATP, and the second step is an oxidation reduction reaction that generates one NADH. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate is then ready to enter glycolysis, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. The next thing to think about is what we're gonna do with all of those fatty acids. First we have to activate the fatty acids and then we have to transfer them into the mitochondrial matrix where they can undergo beta oxidation. Fatty acid activation occurs in two steps. In the first step, ATP bonds with the carbonyl carbon of fatty acid forming acyl adenylate. In this reaction, ATP releases a diphosphate. The diphosphate is further hydrolyzed to create two inorganic phosphates. It's important to realize that because of this second hydrolysis, the energy requirements for this reaction are actually the equivalent of two ATPs. That means when you're doing your balance sheet for all of the ATPs produced during fatty acid beta oxidation, you have to make sure that you subtract two ATPs for every single fatty acid that's activated. In the second step of fatty acid activation, coenzyme A bonds with acyl adenylate, releasing the AMP to create acyl-CoA. Acyl-CoA is an activated fatty acid. Acyl-CoA is transported into the mitochondrial matrix by a carnitine transporter. Once it's inside the mitochondrial matrix, beta oxidation can begin. 